Next, we're going to talk about accessing and exposing pods with services. As I mentioned earlier, uh, pods are supposed to be temporary or short-lived. So once they crash, they're gone, and the replica set will ensure to bring up new pods to maintain the desired number of replicas. Let's say we are running a web frontend in a container within pods. Each pod gets a unique IP address. However, due to their temporary nature, we cannot rely on that IP address. Let's create a deployment that runs a web frontend. So I'm going to create a new file here, and we're going to call it web frontend.yaml. I'll just paste the YAML here. Now, comparing this deployment to the previous one, you'll notice that uh, we changed the resource names and the image that I'm using. One new thing we added to the deployment is the ports section. Using the container port field, we are setting the port number that website uh, server listens on. So the Hello World image is just a simple Node.js Express application. So I save this file, and then let's make sure that we don't have anything running here. Okay, there's nothing running, and I'm going to run kubectl apply minus web frontend.yaml to deploy it. So the deployment was created, and let's just look at the pops, pods and wait for them to uh, come up. There you go. So the pod is running, and I'm just going to check the logs from this pod. So I'll type kubectl logs. Uh, and you'll notice that the web server, the node server that's running within that image or within that container, is listening on port 3000. That's also the same port that we're exposing from, from the container, meaning that we could access this container on the port 3000 from the outside. So let's also look at the pods IP address. So we can say kubectl get pods dash O, O stands for output, and we can say wide output. And this will show us that the pod got the IP address of 0 0.3. Now, if I would delete this pod, so let's say I'll say kubectl delete, delete pod, I'll just copy this name. So Kubernetes will delete the pod, but then because we, we are using a deployment and we're using a replica set, a new pod will get recreated. So let's list the pods again. kubectl get pods output wide. And you'll notice this time the pod's IP address is different. Similarly, uh, if we would scale up the deployment to, uh, let's say, four pods. So let's do that. So we're going to do kubectl scale deployment. The name of deployment is web front end. And we'll say the number of replicas is, let's say, five. So if we scale the deployment and then we look at the pods again, output is wide, not YAML. You'll notice this time we have uh, IP number three, four, uh, six, five, and seven. Now, let's say we want to access one of these pods. So let's look at one of the IP addresses again. So I'll do wide, and let's say I would do curl 172.17.03, uh, colon 3000, because that's the container port. What's going to happen? Well, nothing's going to happen. The, the, the host will be uh, unreachable. The thing is, the pods are running within the cluster, and that IP address is then only accessible from within the cluster. Now, for testing purposes, uh, what I usually do is I run a pod inside the cluster and then use that pod to uh, get shell access. And then from that pod or from that container, I can curl to any of uh, the internal IP addresses. So let me just cancel this out. This would uh, time out uh, eventually. So one of the images that I use is radial busybox plus curl. And this image is just a regular busy, uh, busy box image that has curl installed. So this is how you could run it. You would run kubectl uh, run. Uh, let's say we're going to name the pod curl. You can name it whatever you want. And we'll say image is radial slash busy box plus colon curl dash i and tty. So let's run this. And I will also open a separate terminal window uh, uh, below the first one. 
So we're now inside of the pod called curl. So if I list down here, if I list the pods, you will see we have the curl pod, uh, and then we have our other five pods that we created uh, through that deployment. So let's look at the IP address again, and I'll just pick this one, 06. So if we're gonna do curl to 3000 this time, this time we actually get, get a response back that says, hello world. And this is because we're inside the cluster, this pod is running inside the cluster, so it has access to any IP addresses running in the same cluster. The Kubernetes service is an abstraction that gives us a way to reach the pod's IP in a reliable way. The service controller that's similar to replica sets controller maintains a list of endpoints or the pod IP addresses. The controller then uses a selector and labels to watch for the pods. So whenever a controller creates or deletes a pod that matches the selector, the service controller will add or remove the pod's IP address from the endpoints list. So let's create a service for our web front end deployment. So I will create a new file and we're going to call it web frontend service.yaml. And I will paste in the YAML file. So the top portion here, this should already look familiar by now. It's just a metadata section with the names and labels. Um, kind is of course different this time. The kind is the kind of the resource is a service. Now this selector here under the spec uh, item, this is where we are actually selecting or defining the labels that the service will use to query for the pods. So you can think about this service owning those pods or this service uh, providing access to the pods that have uh, those labels set or then match, uh, then match that selector. Now, if you look at back in deployment, you'll notice that these are the exact labels that we're also setting in our pod template as well. Finally, under the ports section, we are defining the port number, and this is the port number of the service. This is where the service will be accessible on. We're naming the port as HTTP, and then we're also defining the target port. So this is the port on the deployment or port on the pod. So this 3000 here matches the container port that's exposed on the containers or on the pod. So let's deploy this service. So let's say kubectl apply dash f web frontend service dot yaml. To see the deployed service, we can do kubectl get a service, and there's the Kubernetes service, the the uh, the API servers, but there's also the web front end, and this is the one that we just created. So you'll notice it has an IP address as well, and it has a port, and the port is 80 because that's what we set the port number to. All right, so let's try accessing this service. So what I'm gonna do is we still have the curl pod running. So what we can do is uh, we can just attach to this uh, to this container or this pod. So the pod is called curl, the container is called curl as well, minus i minus t. And we're gonna get a, a shell access to that container just like we did before. Now from here, uh, let me just open a separate window down here so we can just get the services IP address. So the services IP address is, so I'm gonna do curl 10.09203, uh, 203, 2.11. Uh, the port is 80, so I'm not gonna specify it. And this time, it all works as well. Now, the reason that this works is because this service is uh, doing the load balancing across all those pods or all those pod IPs that we have running. So all these five, um, five pods that we have running. Using the service's IP address is okay and it works, but it's much better if we could just use the, um, the actual name of the service. So instead of using the service's IP address, we could also curl to the name of the service and then we'll say dot, and that's followed by the name of the namespace. So default is the namespace where our 
web front end is uh, deployed in. And we have to also follow it by the cluster's domain name, which in our case is cluster.local. And I also missed a dot SVC here, which is telling us that this is the service. So if I do curl to this address, it's gonna work as well. Now, it will also work if I do curl front end, and that's because this curl container uh, or pod is running in the same namespace. So it's in the same default namespace as the service. Alternatively, you can also use web front end dot default to fully qualify the service name, and this will work as well. Now, practically, you, I would suggest that you always use uh, the full service name as well the namespace name because you might run into cases where uh, you might have same uh, services with the same names running in different namespaces and it can lead to a lot of confusion if the only thing you're calling is web front end but you have no idea which front end is it is it the one in the default namespace or the one in any other namespace Another way you can access services that are only available inside of the cluster is through the proxy. So kubectl has a command called proxy and that command will create a gateway between your local computer, between local host and the Kubernetes API server. Now this proxy allows you to access the Kubernetes API as well as access the Kubernetes services. However, you should never use this proxy to expose your services to the public. You should only use this proxy for uh, debugging or troubleshooting. So let's open a terminal window and we're going to run a command called kubectl proxy. And I will create this proxy on port 8080. So what if I can type, so I'll say proxy. So what this command is going to do is it will listen to 127001, which is my local host on port 8080, and it's going to tunnel or gateway or proxy those calls to the Kubernetes uh, API server. So let me change this, the size here a little bit. So now if I would go and curl to, let's say, localhost 8080, what I'm going to get is, is I'll get a list of all APIs from the Kubernetes API. So these are all the APIs that Kubernetes supports. So I could also do, for example, curl, uh, let's say localhost, localhost, 8080, API, v1, and pods. And this will give me all the pods that are running inside uh, my cluster. Similarly, I could do, uh, let's say namespaces, for example. So API, v1, namespaces and this will give me all the namespaces. Now using this proxy, we can also access the web front end service we deployed. So instead of running the pod inside the cluster and then making curl requests, we can just use this proxy and then curl to the service like that. So the way you do that is you would run curl localhost 8080 and it's API v1 and we're saying namespaces, the name of the namespace where our service is, it's called default and we're trying to access the um, services resource. The service name is front end and it's running or uh, it's listening on port 80 and we want to get a proxy to it. So let me just do this and it's moved and we need to uh, follow the things, the, the call, right? The redirect. Uh, there we go. So we got 200 back we also got back the actual hello world uh, response just like we did before. Using the describe command, we can get more information about the service resource. So let's type, uh, let's type kubectl describe svc web front end. And this view, just like before, it, uh, or just like describe you on any other resource, it'll give you more readable information about that resource. It's going to show you the labels, the selectors, the service type, the IP and the ports. Additionally, notice the uh, endpoints here as well. So these IP addresses correspond to the IP addresses of the pods. So if I would run kubectl get pods and do the wide view, 
So you'll see 0, 3, that's one of our pods. 0, 4, same thing. Uh, 0, 5 is this one. And there's two more. Now, endpoints are also a resource, so you can directly view the endpoints. If you run kubectl, get endpoints. And this will show you uh, pretty much a subset of the previous view. It will only show you the endpoints on the services that are running inside the Kubernetes cluster. Now, to see the controller that manages these endpoints in action, we can use the watch command. So let's do in a separate terminal window, I will run kubectl get endpoints dash dash watch. So what this is doing, it's just uh, watching for any changes and then outputting those changes to the console. And what we're going to do now is let's say we want to scale our deployment. We're going to scale it down the deployment front end to uh, let's say one replica and let's see what happens. So there we go. Uh, the service controller uh, listens to any changes and then actually notice that the pods that match that selector label were removed. And what it did, it pretty much removed those endpoints from the list and we were, we ended up with only one endpoint in the list. Similarly, if we would scale this up, let's say, let's go extreme and let's say 10 replicas. The, the same thing will happen, but uh, the other way around. And the reason it's taking longer now is because it takes a little bit of time for Kubernetes to start all these pods. So you'll see as the pods are uh, getting started and running, uh, all of them are running. Right now, there's 10 endpoints in the web front end service.